What's going on there guys? Good evening. The Earthmaster here on this beautiful Sunday evening uh, with an update video on this uh, Easter, April 17th date, 2022. It's about uh, 6.13 p.m. California time. Latest quake out there on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 2.4 earthquake coming into the area of Southern California and that's going to be the earthquake uh, that you are seeing on the live seismograph view. We've got live seismograph stations throughout the globe, uh, including a station down here in Barrett, California. That's the uh, 2.4 that you're seeing there on the seismograph just east of San Diego. Let's go ahead and check out uh, the uh, recent activity here on the USGS map. We'll go ahead and go to the all magnitude so we can kind of see what's going on down here in Southern California. Oh, there is that 2.4 near Julian, 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 however you want to pronounce it, I don't care. Uh, 10 kilometers for that earthquake there. And it's centered right around the area of that Barrett, California station. Uh, that seismograph sits roughly right south here a little bit, right along the Elsinore fault system. So it's picking up pretty significantly uh, for that 2.4. Uh, up along the San Jacinto Fault Zone, some swarming going on here in the northern end. Also a little bit of activity up here within the last hour up around the uh, San Andreas Fault Zone. Uh, 1.5 near uh, Devor, California at 8 kilometers uh, below the surface. Ridgecrest, eastern part of the Sierra Nevada and into Nevada itself has remained relatively minimal. Far as background activity goes, folks. So there's not a whole lot to cover. Yes. There's a microquake activity, but not a whole lot going on. Uh, Northern California, a little bit of movement up here outside of Mount Lassen uh, near Millville and Mant uh, Manton, California. A couple lower grade ones, pretty uh, deep in the area of the western part of the Sierra Nevada. And also some movement up here outside of the southern end of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone there. 2.8 occurred. Uh, well off the coast and also 1.8 here well inland uh, off the uh, petrolia area at 16.2 kilometers let's go ahead and check out the latest trimmer map here for the movement and of course we've been having an issue with monitoring the activity along the cascadia uh they whatever the reason may be they're they're not reporting or at least it seems like they're a couple days uh behind so Nothing going on the 16th. I uh, have a strange feeling that's not correct. They're only reporting activity here from about the uh, 15th. So a couple days ago is when the last activity re uh, was reported along the southern end of the Cascadia as far as tremor activity goes. But I um, I'm highly doubt that. I think there's a little bit more activity uh, going on than what's uh, being reported there from the agencies that uh, get paid for it get paid to report to, to the uh, to the public folks so someone was asking me about the biggest solar X flare um, recorded at least in historical times of course back in the eight we had the Carrington event right we're not gonna include that but we're just gonna go back to about early 2003 when we had an X 28 flare okay that was a pretty significant flare in 2003 back then man what was i doing i don't know i honestly i can't remember what i was doing back uh, in that era uh, I, I believe i was working probably a 12-hour shift and uh, just focusing on uh, providing for the family uh, and the sun didn't even come to mind a lot unfortunately that comes to a lot of folks minds you know what's happening on the sun is no concern to what's happening in our daily lives but i think we need to overlook that that aspect there you know our 24 7 job uh taking care of the bills paying our taxes i think we need to look into perspective of what the sun can do in aspect of controlling our daily lives so the x28 flare uh, occurred on november 4th 2003 uh, there was quite a few issues going on with the activity with this with this uh flare it did create uh, some havoc there on the North American continent with some power outages and whatnot. Uh, X flares are big. They are major events that can trigger radio blackouts and the whole world 
and long-lasting radiation storms in the upper atmosphere. Sometimes these stronger ones uh, can produce uh, power outages, such as Canada, right? I believe that's when this happened here. I've seen some issues with the power grid. So that's the X-28 flare, and, that, and that's, that's only recent, recent history. Okay, there's much stronger events that has occurred in the uh, in in our past. So, want to check out the current solar weather data. We did see some movement kick up here around the M flare range, from the or close to the M flare range, upper C. Well, actually, actually, this one right here did reach into the upper M flare range. Uh, looks like it may have occurred from. Uh, let's go ahead and check out exactly where this is occurring from stand by for just a second see if we got any updates on it uh that so it looks like uh 2992 it's a sunspot that is situated on the uh, western limb over here okay we've been kind of focusing on the eastern limb okay there's that's a big sunspot don't let that fool you that thing is coming around the bin, and that's going to probably produce a couple X flares in the coming days and weeks. It's an older sunspot, but it's a massive. There's a massive sunspot coming around uh, towards the Earth side. But that M flare, it's an M4.4, kicked off from 2992 uh, near in the southwest limb. Uh, it did produce a, a, radi a brief radio blackout. Uh, no major effects are expected from this quick solar flare, but it it, it did crackle and pop, and produce a uh, pretty significant flare there, right on this side of the western limb, eastern side of the limb. Look at that. There's that's you can't tell me that's not massive. Look at that. That's a massive sunspot about ready to turn into the Earth view, and I'm I'm pretty excited to see what this thing's going to provide for us in the coming days. It's an old sun uh, sunspot. Uh, formerly known as 2975, it did produce an X flare a couple weeks ago. Uh, it has been renamed. I, I don't know why it would be renamed, but it's the Earth side of the sunspot, so that's kind of why they're renaming it. But it's former sunspot 2975, now known as 2994, towards the east, eastern limb. It is crackling with some M flares, and uh, it did provide us with this X flare. Um, la uh, yesterday, pretty significant 1.1 X flare. I remember these are uh, we're getting towards the solar maximum, folks. Here in a couple years, 2025, 2022, right? I can't believe it. Feels like I'm living in the future, but to here in about three years, around June and July, is the peak of the solar maximum. So you can expect. Um, and advancements and major solar activity uh, from here on out. That's a fact. That is a fact. And uh, it can disrupt uh, GPS communications and provide radiation storms at the higher levels uh, of the atmosphere. And it can, uh, it can kind of cause drag on the satellites that orbit, uh, that orbit Earth uh, if they're really strong flares and CMEs, it can provide uh, some, some major drag on those satellites up there above us and uh, cost, possibly cause them to fail and fall to Earth. So we don't know 100%, right? We're, we're so dependent on everything around us. I mean, I'm 100% dependent upon the Internet here for this channel. Uh, it can Major flares and CMEs can cause worldwide Internet issues. So, uh, you know, everyone's so dependent on, well, let me check my bank statement here online. Let me check my my app. Let me check my Facebook and YouTube and all that stuff. And it's just, we're so dependent on electronics right now. And it's, uh, I think we're coming to a peak. And I think that peak may be, uh, who knows, it may be settled and uh, squashed. And we may be headed towards a downtrend, downtrend pretty soon. It's just something to watch pretty closely, folks. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. And uh, we do provide uh, pretty fast alerts when it comes to solar flare, solar weather activity. And, I'll, of course, we run the 24-7 live stream here on this channel. That will never go away. It uh, doesn't matter what happens. This, this channel will never go away. Um, 
so we will be watching the activity pretty closely I want to go up here into the uh, let's go to the one day one minute data here you can see that X of uh, the uh, M flare pop up there pretty uh, nice M flare I don't know if there was a C it, actually it looks like there was a CME produced with it uh, since then we have been seeing the uh, sunspot activity crackling with sea flares uh, upper sea flares so the M the uh, X flare probability is still somewhat up there folks I mean it's kind of like popcorn in a way and I mentioned this on my previous update video uh, whether you're cooking popcorn in a pan on the stove right the old-fashioned way or you're cooking popcorn in the microwave uh, you got that heat radiating right sizzling the butter or whatever you're cooking it in and uh, eventually hear a pop 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 popping noise right that's that's a popcorn popping in the heat this kind of reminds me of it you see this sizzling this is sizzling with these M flares and upper C flares before a major pop and that's kind of what we seen there with the X flare earlier with the X 1.1 uh, so pay attention pay very close attention to this activity here we've seen it prior to the X flare right here you guys can check this out yourself uh, this is not fake this is not makeup data uh, I had someone actually calling me out here saying that I'm that I'm forecasting fake data you know that it's false but you know anyone can check this out I'm just trying to point out my observation what I see prior to a major flare and that's kind of what we're looking at right now over the past few hours and earlier this evening this afternoon uh, prior to what we've seen to the X flare so you know the uh, unfortunately I read all the comments I read every single comment good and bad and sometimes it's like really come on guys the negative comments I get it it happens but uh, it's it's it is what it is so um, all I can do is just go with the punches so pay close attention folks here in the coming hours as we head into the April 18th UTC time uh, for a possible X flare here pretty soon uh let's see geomagnetic magnetic storming does uh call for a very slow low uh storming at the higher latitudes only a 40 percent chance a three to four kp index range and it's kind of kind of mellowed out here over the last few hours but uh, this is subject to change april april 19 20th and the week ahead uh, subject to change with the ongoing solar weather activity Let's see, folks, what else do we have out here? Uh, some movement taking place across the globe, across the flat scale map, depending on what you believe in, uh, out here around the Indonesia area. Latest quake, a uh, 4.3 earthquake in the Dampo, Dampu, Indonesia area, 35 kilometers. I'm going to start pronouncing these right. And uh, we've seen a, another earthquake here. In the uh, little bit larger scale, 5.1 near Dampu, Indonesia, uh, earlier this afternoon. There's the activity in Australia late last night. We've seen that activity pop up. No major earthquakes to report, folks, as uh, far as volcanic activity goes as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and check out the West Coast movement with the all magnitudes activity. And uh, like I said, there's not a whole lot going on in the eastern part of the uh, Sierra Nevada down here in Southern California aside from a little bit of movement on the San Jacinto fault zone There's no major swarms no activity going on. I kind of had someone call me out today folks on the activity at the uh, fracking operations and the uh, Injection wells and the gas and oil fields, right? I'm not gonna go into it tonight I don't want to bring up all the maps all the hazards all the historical data when it comes to pointing out uh, this activity in the gas and oil fields but when you go down into the earth when you drill down into the earth and subtract the gas the oil whatever you're subtracting from the pressure in the ground um, eventually it doesn't matter if you inject it with wastewater or not uh, eventually you come upon some earthquakes and it could take months it could take years before earthquake activity happens in these gas and oil fields so I had someone call me out saying that uh, uh, I'm proclaiming that these gas and oil field earthquakes 
are earthquakes without providing proof. So we've looked at historical data when it comes to um, fracking operations, oil field operations and whatnot uh, in historical times. And we've seen that they've jumped up majorly in trends when these operations took place. So you cannot tell me that this is not related. So I'm, like I said, I read all comments, folks, good and bad. And sometimes the bad, you know, it's, it, sometimes it gets to me a little bit. And, and some, sometimes people call me out. And there's no reason to call me out because I provide factual data here on this channel. And uh, it's, it's all within the fields of the gas and oil rigs, all within there. Um, I'm going to do a little bit further update tomorrow and provide more detail. I, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, adhere to the naysayers and the haters on this channel, uh, but I will do a further update and provide further proof um, to the ongoing activity here throughout Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas, anywhere. There's these fracking operations and oil rig operations, all these oil fields. They drill down there at about three, three to six kilometers or so, and and uh, and do all this damage to the surface of the Earth. When the Earth is continuously under pressure, the North American plate, of course, you're going to have earthquakes. It makes sense. So the naysayers, you know, they keep it coming. That's all I say. Keep it coming. You know, bring on the negative comments because I will read them all. Uh, what else we got, folks? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to move on there it just kind of bugged me a little bit with the uh, uh some of the comments i read today um aside from the activity through the western pacific ring of fire there's not a whole lot of major activity going on as you can see here on the trimmer map I, we're we're kind of uh dependent on the PNSN network, and they're kind of they're kind of slacking. I think they should probably get a little pay raise demotion, not pay raise, but pay cut, because they've been pretty slacking in the uh, activity reporting here at the Trimmer. Yellowstone National Park, about the same thing. Nothing going on. Zip zero. Nada. Maybe a couple of small microquakes here. Uh, West Boundary showing a little bit of activity here. A couple small, very small earthquakes. But overall, things kind of a little on the mellow side, folks. So uh, it's kind of funny. I, I got called out as well on the solar weather prediction from the same guy. But uh, I kind of monitor these charts. I monitor this uh, activity similar to swarms. When we see a whole bunch of consistent upper sea flares, uh, it's getting ready to crackle. It's getting ready to pop. It's getting ready, you know, just like popcorn, just like the popcorn phrase uh, or story that I kind of used here a little bit ago. When we see this elevated activity from a major sunspot, come on. To ignore it is pretty uh, stupid in my books, okay? You can't ignore this stuff. 25% chance of an X flare, that's realistic. 75% uh, chance of an M flare, 99% chance of a C flare. But we're currently in the sea flare threshold, so it's uh, it's obvious. But uh, look for further activity, folks. Mark my words. Um, the haters, come on in, come on in. Put your gloves on. I had a couple people subscribe unsubscribe from me today because I was forecasting solar weather events. So hey, it is what it is. You can't make the whole world happy, right? You cannot make everyone happy. So best I can do is uh continue on with the updates observe what what i observe and report as accordingly so subscribe like share the video we're all over the place on youtube facebook twitter make sure you guys um join on those sites as well so we'll chat you guys a little bit later i'm gonna go sit back and read some more comments folks have a good night we'll chat you guys a little bit later